Well, howdy YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, I am going to be the king of cheap yet again. We are going to take some used parts that I have laying around and we're going to create a low cost, fairly high performance, mid performance NAS unit, okay? I've got these HP thin clients, these T610s. Uh, I've got an external USB 3 drive caddy. I've got an SSD drive. And I've got two spinning one terabyte hard drives. And our goal today is to make an entry level low cost NAS that you can afford to build on your own if you have some parts laying around. Uh, not all of us can afford Synology NAS, not all of us can afford a NAS with a lot, of, a lot of hard drives in here, but using the technology we have and the used parts we have, we can make a home NAS that should be suitable for sharing photos, videos, and uh, sound uh, or audio files, music files to your home network. So let's get started right now. All right, so let's have a discussion about the parts we're going to use. Over here I have the Cavalry a USB 3, and it's a docking station, an external docking station. This caddy will accept 3.5 and 2.5 inch spinning drives, as well as SSD drives. So it gives us the ability to use, uh, and here are the drives we're going to use. We have a couple of spinning drives. I have an old, uh, what is that, a Hitachi 1 terabyte drive, and I have an older Seagate one terabyte drive. Now this one is pending failure, but it'll be okay for a demo video, which is what we're going to be doing. Now, on the back of this caddy, you can see it's got a blue USB 3 connection there, and it's got power. So this is ideal. So to start with, we could use spinning drives, and then later you could upgrade it to SSD drives if you wanted to. Uh, you can also get these in a four drive version, a five drive version, uh, but we're doing this on the cheap. This is a this is a caddy I bought probably five, six years ago when USB 3 first came out. It's been a trooper. It works well. Uh, you can also uh, do a drive to drive copy with it. So there are other benefits. Now the computer we're going to be using to make all this happen today, uh, you can pick these up on eBay for about 30 bucks a piece. I have three of them. Uh, that, I, that I have here at Unky Joe's Playhouse. I went ahead and got them because I like these units so much. You can run Linux on them. You can run Windows on them. Uh, you can run Windows 10. You can also run Windows 7, but the drivers are a little iffy. So I would recommend you run Windows 10 or maybe Linux Mint or something like that. On. For the video we're going to be doing today, we're going to use, we're going to put Windows 10 on here. Now this is not a really powerful unit. It has an AMD processor in it. It's a 1.6 gigahertz. It has 4 gig of RAM, and that's expandable, they say, up to 16 if you needed that much RAM. But we're just going to be running Windows 10 on it. We only need about 4 gig of RAM. That should be plenty. The bottleneck in this system, as you can see, though, is going to be this SSD, the 16 gig SSD. This is a very slow uh, serial ATA1 interface uh, drive. So the, the beauty of these HPs, though, is they have serial ATA ports built onto them. So it's just a matter of us. We're going to remove this device, and then we're going to replace this with a 275 gig SSD drive I had laying around. In addition to that, if you have the 620 model of this, it's a little bit thicker. But you see here, we have a PCI expansion slot here. So in theory... You could even turn this into a PFSense firewall if you could uh, put your uh, network card in here if you had the 620. We have the 610. Now on the back of this unit, uh, it has PS2 mouse and keyboard. We have a serial port. We have two uh, USB 2 ports on the back and two USB 2 ports on the front. And we also have two USB 3 ports on the back of this thing. Those are the blue ports. And then we have DVI out. It has a 10... 100 1000 NIC card in it and again it's only DVI out uh, DVI uh, out on the back but uh, that should be fine I have a monitor capable of that again these are really nice little units on the front of them got USB out and it's got audio in and out and then a power button these are very reliable units they run fairly coolly they they use very little electricity so it's a low it's a low power alternative and once we put this SSD drive in here you won't even know that's a 1.6 gigahertz processor because it'll boot like that so let's go ahead and get it assembled now and show you what the uh, finished product is going to look like 
and then we'll get on to the uh, software. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and put the SSD drive in here. We've got a crucial uh, 275 gig, two and a half inch hard drive. Now I don't have the mounting kit for the SSD drive. Now if you're using a spinning drive, they're much heavier than an SSD and I would recommend you get the approved kit. Uh, I'm just going to basically slide an SSD drive in here. There is one screw that holds this in and that screw is right there. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that screw. We'll set her to the side and then it should just, you should be able to push on either side to get that out. There we go. So it's a little 16 gig serial ATA flash card is what they call these. Now what I'm going to do, I don't want to lose the screw, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put this screw back in where it belongs. And then put this away in a safe location. You know, uh, put this away in a safe location. You never know, you might need it again. All right. And then putting the SSD drive in, this is the uh, serial a other serial ATA controller right here on the board. Your other option, of course, is you could get a larger flash card. They do make them. Uh, I don't think they're going to be as fast as using uh, an SSD drive. So all I'm going to do is take my SSD drive, it'll lay it on here, line it up. and simply push it in place and you can see it's lightweight enough to where you got a little bounce in there but it's not going to go anywhere it's not a spinning hard drive so so there you go that's all there is to it now let's get it put back together and uh, I'll have my assistant come in and put the case back together for you so you can see how that's done and then we'll uh, move on to the next part of the video Alright, so the machine is assembled and put together and here we go. Now I have elected to use drive bender on this machine. Uh, I just think it's a really good way to use the capacity of your drives. And, uh, <clears throat> you can use uh, Microsoft storage spaces on here if you wanted to, but that, uh, that combines both drives into one large drive and uh, you lose uh, one drive worth of storage. So, but with drive bender, uh, if you have critical files, you can do what is called duplication on the folders. Uh, and then the other things that you don't need duplicated can just use up hard drive space. And it will balance the files between the two hard drives. So uh, DriveBender still is in production and in use. And uh, it's I think it's about 20 bucks, and I think you get three licenses with it. So here are the specs on that machine. It is an AMD G-256N processor. And the base speed is 1.65 gigahertz. It's a dual core CPU. We got uh, three and a half gig. We actually have four gig of RAM, but half of a gigabyte of that is dedicated to the video card. The SSD drive is the C drive. And then disk one and disk two are the external drives in the USB 3 caddy. Uh, it's up and running here. It's stabilized. We are running Windows 10 version 1809 with all updates done. So now let's uh, let's transfer some files and see what kind of speeds we get. All right, so over to the right here, I have my, uh, this is connected to my home NAS and this is the music folder. So we're just gonna copy, we're gonna select everything in here by doing a control A, get rid of the recycle bin, we don't need that. And then we're gonna right click and we're gonna copy. And we're gonna come over to the music folder on my drive pool drive and paste. Now these are smaller files. They're not as large as video files, so our transfer speeds won't be as great. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this window here and we'll focus on the Ethernet connection. And you can see it is a gigabit Ethernet connection. It's a Broadcom card. So it's going to go out there and it's going to count the size of the files that I want to copy. And then the copy will start. And we'll see what kind of write speeds we get to that array. And I'm just going to warn you, they're not they're not great, but they're not that bad either. Now with the smaller files, as you can see, we're only writing at 19 to 20 megabytes per second. Nothing to be amazed 
about, but uh, uh, they do they do copy over. So we'll we'll let this run. Now, if you monitor, let me try to move some stuff out of the way here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is one of the things I really like about Dry Pool. In fact, we can just minimize this and leave this copy window down here. What I like is it tells you what files it's reading or writing. It updates the graph as you go. You get an idea of the IOPS you get with the writes, and you get an idea of the write speeds. And then, as you can see over here on the other side, we are uh, receiving our data about 200 megabits per second. It's so about 20 megabytes per second. And you can see it'll write to one drive, then it'll switch and it'll start writing to another. So as we come into the home stretch, you'll see it's not too bad. Not too, too bad. Remember, we're doing this on the cheap, so you can't, and we're using an external USB drive, so you can't expect drive copy speeds as if you had directly attached drives to this. If I had these connected via eSATA, I would probably get better speeds. And what's ironic is if, you know, if I do a test like this, uh, you'll see as we copy a larger like video files over, I'm getting about 50 megabytes per second as opposed to the normal 100 megabyte. Uh, however, when I run Crystal Dismark on here, the read and write speeds on the drives are 100 megabytes per second. So I don't know if it's the overhead for having to go through a USB controller that the write speeds are lower. I don't know. But if any of you do know, please leave your comments down in the comments section. I'd like to know, uh, or if you even have a theory, and maybe we can do a little further testing. All right, so that copy is just about complete. And remember, this is Microsoft time, so five seconds could be five hours. All right, so let me load my uh, File Explorer up again, and let, this time let's go, uh, we're gonna copy some video, and you see I've already done my aliens, so let's get rid of those. Go ahead and delete them. And then we'll come over here back to my video folder on my NAS. And we'll go ahead and copy those back over just to give you an idea of the speeds. Drag and drop. We start out strong. But again, it comes down to about 20 megabytes per second. And it will come up. I think the, the, the best speed we ever got on this was about 50 megabytes per second. So hopefully we'll achieve that again. So we'll let this run. So while we're waiting for the copy to finish, let's talk about uh, what this would be good for. Well, if you have if you have a simple home network and you have a couple of Roku's or maybe you have a couple of Nvidia Shields or a TiVo or something of that sort, and you need a media center on the cheap, you got the price of the uh, thin client, which is about you know thirty five dollars. You got the cost of your hard drives, your external USB caddy or, or eSATA caddy, whatever you want to use. Uh, and you have a cost of a Windows license and uh, maybe Drive Bender if you want to use that or if you want to use the Drive Pooling software built into Windows 10, you could do that. And you get a, a fairly speedy machine that can handle a couple of simultaneous Roku connections. You could run MB, you could run Plex on this. I doubt you're going to be happy if you need to transcode 4K video. I would strongly not recommend that. 
And if you rip your videos properly, your 1080p videos properly, you won't need to do transcoding on the uh, on the Roku devices. Uh, uh, you'll be you'll be in good shape. So this would be a good situation for if you want to get into a home uh, media center server setup, and you want to get into a NAS, but you just don't have a lot of money. You can you can do it fairly inexpensively with used parts, and uh, uh, nothing wrong with it. As you can see, it works. It's not as fast as say my Xmenology or Synology NAS, but uh, it's it's not a, a slouch by any means. Now once the copy finishes, I'm going to go out and show you what I was talking about on, for example, if you were to use drive pool, you would lose the capacity of one drive, you, one drive if you set it up in a RAID 1 array. Well, I don't want to mirror everything on these drives. The only thing that I'm really worried about is my photos and my music, you know, because you can't get photos back. And again, this is not a substitute for a backup, but it is a way to give your data a little bit of redundancy. And it's very simple. You just go up here to duplication. You come down uh, to the folder, and you see I've already done it with photos. So come down to the music folder, and I want to duplicate that. So you have a, a choice. You can enable duplication on the selected folder or on the selected folders and all child folders. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to tell it yes. And it's going to go out and it's going to start uh, duplicating the data. And this just takes a minute or so to get started. And it'll finish the duplication in the background. And we're going to close. And the nice thing is, that, you know, this gives you a chart. It tells you what, how much duplicate files are being used, how much the primary is using, what's free non-pooled usage. It breaks it down by documents, compressed files, music, pictures, videos, web, and other. And the other nice thing, of course, about DriveBender is the fact that you can get your smart statistics for the drives, even using an external USB. So you can see it's an Atashi. The smart reporting is good. It uh, Does it give me the temperature of the drive? Let's see here. Yeah, it gives me the current temperature of the drive, how long the drive's been powered up. Uh, and then I can show the smart attributes if I want to. And you'll see one of the drives I have on here is got a pending failure. It's not very healthy, but smart is reporting as acceptable. So there you go. So there you go. My assistant, Jerry. Say hi, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Yeah, see, he's good at it, right? Hey, uh, we got it up and running. We did it on the cheap. There it is up oh, on the bench behind us. You can see the caddy and you can see the uh, thin client up and running and you can see Toby sleeping on the floor because that's what he does best. So you don't get a lot of money, but you want a NAS. This is an alternative for you. It was just kind of a proof of concept video. Uh, you know, you, you may like it, you may not like it, and you're not going to get fantastic drive speeds, transfer speeds, but that's okay. You work with what you got. That's what this video is all about. So thanks again for watching. We hope you found the video entertaining and informative as always. Please leave your comments down in the comments section. Please give us thumbs up down below if you like what you had to see. If you didn't like what you had to see, sorry, that's the best I can do. And uh, donate if you're so inclined. Uh, we take PayPal, we take Patreon. Thanks again for coming to see us and please don't forget, we'll see you Yo, on the other side. <laughs>